From pillar to post, it's Wrestling Perspective. I'm Dennis Farrell. He's Russ McCall. We're going to talk about wrestling for the next hour, Russ. Let's talk about it. Good, bad, and ugly, man. We Ooh. have a lot of stuff to get to. It's Double or Nothing weekend. You went yeah. to All In last I year. I did, yeah. Is this, their, this has to be their WrestleMania going forward, right? You think Double or Nothing is? Or, or, I think or that All In turns into This that. weekend. This oh. weekend has to be their WrestleMania weekend. No, no, I think I think All In will probably be. That's but, I mean that's the launch was, point. So I would it, imagine All In's going to be. It was done on the same weekend last year though. This weekend was it really? Yes. Oh my no. Yes. No, no. I thought it was in the fall. No, nope. It was Are you done. Sure? Yes. Wow. It, it was. It okay. Was, it was this weekend last year, and and I feel like. For a company just getting started out, and if you I feel like that's not right, look it up. But okay. you have a phone. Yeah. You as as Russ walks away from the studio, no, you can silence some things. Man. Look, look it up. Look at the date for All In. This was All In weekend last year. I remember because I wanted to go. My wife wouldn't let me. Yeah, you were out of lockdown. It, I was because it's a family holiday. We go up to the lake house and. I was supposed to do a show with Ellsworth at at All In, which didn't end up happening. Thank God. So <laughs> <laughs> I can say it. You can't. No, I got nothing. I'm just gonna quietly. It it was. It might have felt. It might have felt different because it was in Chicago and a little bit colder. It yeah. Well, you know what? It it really wasn't bad. I remember that. I remember the weather being good. So for it. So I'm just scrolling down. I wanted to find the date for the show. So. You, why didn't you just type it all see, in? It pulled up double or nothing stuff, man. No, it was September, man. Was it September? It was September. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, what was the date in September? Labor Day. It's September 1st. Yeah, it's, a, it's all the same. So September 1st, May, whatever. Either yeah. way. You you're, know. Thinking, you're thinking wrong American holiday. It's all the same, aren't they? <laughs> kind of, but it, not there, exactly. There we go. It's <laughs> Memorial Day. We're Labor doing Day. the same stuff. It's not the same meeting. Yes. We're doing the same stuff. But... One of the so two six dates. months difference. One of the two, there we go. <laughs> but one of the two dates has to be their WrestleMania. It's all in. All, I think all in is. I, I think this is your SummerSlam style secondary key. I think whatever they add besides all in and double or nothing is going to be their is going to be your your fill in pay per views. But those are going to be your main two. All right. When we come back from commercial break, we will talk some more about this because. I, I'm interested in seeing where they go from there with this. We're going to talk about Raw, SmackDown, Money in the Bank, a little bit of a recap of it because there was some pretty big stuff that came out. Brock Lesnar, the 24 7 title, and Pac in, in his situation. You're listening to the Wrestling Perspective. You can go to WrestlingPerspectivePodcast.com, get this and all the podcasts. We'll be right back. All right, we're back from commercial break. Wrestling Perspective, Russ McCall, Dennis Farrell, talking some wrestling with you guys. All right, Russ, uh, at the top of the show, we were talking about Double or Nothing, trying to figure out going forward, if this is their Summer Slam, September yeah. will be their WrestleMania. Do you yeah, think they're going to so. do another one then in September, or is this a once a year event? I think. Oh, I think it'll be all in again. I, I would hope. I don't know. I don't know if they'll change the name. I mean, at this point, I think you've established it. Maybe I think you keep it. See, it's, I don't think it hurts to keep the name. I don't think so either. All in would be a great WrestleMania type name for them. I don't know about Double or Nothing because I feel like if you don't have it in Vegas next year, does it does it really? Get... Well, I think the two names, All in and Double or Nothing, play off each other. Vegas was a nice little catch. To go along with the theme, but it, it was. I mean, you, you're still got, a, you've still got. Even All In's got a gambling theme, right? You're just you know, but and that was in Chicago, so I, I don't think Vegas is necessary. But is it's, there? It's, it doesn't hurt to keep it keep it there. WCW used to do that all the time. Well, they played off of it, and, and Double or Nothing was their second one. Double or Nothing. Yeah. Now, do they do something for their third one? Because now. If you look at this card, and from grumblings I've heard in the wrestling industry, is yeah. they have ticked off a lot of other companies. Now, you, you so be it. And, and no, and I yeah. get it. But but last year it was a coming together of all the wrestlers. This year you're not seeing and getting that same feel, even from Starcast. Where at Starcast, it, everybody begged to be at Starcast. Yeah. Now. Guys in other companies are not going to Starcast. They're not going to to this well, weekend. They're in, yeah. Well, they don't want to stay out of hot water. So exactly. But but here's the thing. Which hurts Starcast. Which I don't care what anybody says. Conrad Thompson is in bed. 
It, it, he came Him out a genius. No, no, no. He's absolutely, <laughs> but yeah, he's, I think he's on. Yeah, but I he think came a out and he's like, I'm not affiliated with AEW, but yet he's on their page and all this stuff. You can't lie to me, man. He, you're, you are absolutely, you were in bed with him. Oh, I, I think there's a definite level of that for sure. I mean, I mean, the connections are pretty obvious. Absolutely. So, but I don't know. I, I feel like. When you're looking at AEW and what they did going into All In, mm-hmm. if the rumblings were true, because I mean they announced that night we're a unit and we're moving forward, wait to see what yeah. happens next, right. Right? right? So they had this AEW stuff and the idea of oh, whatever double or nothing, if that was the title, whatever they had working on the, a second show mm-hmm. um, in the bag, lined up, and they knew it was happening. I agree. So. If those other companies that were working with him at the time let all of that happen and had no inkling whatsoever that this is about to be a business situation and that business is business and your top talents are already – are these guys, you know they're, they're about to leave. If you didn't see that coming, you're an idiot, frankly. I, I don't think it's less that you saw it coming – I think well, a lot of, ex- but it, would you expect? You expected no, them to just give you? No, no, no. no. I mean, here, here's what I think it is: is a once AEW started going, they were poaching not just wrestling talent, but backstage people from other companies, and and you know what? I, I it's kind I, of a I, no I take, no in the wrestling. But business. I take I take I take issue with the idea that they're poaching anything. Well, look at Impact; they lost their director to AEW. Now he left. Okay. But that that's like an unspoken... so WWE pit poached five of their their agents and look at the relationship though although it's different because WWE kind of has a closed gate situation where it absolutely is uh, different. It's a company with more money willing no, to pay more, talent, more established company, more money. But but when work. they poach, people will still get mad. Think of how mad so Ring of Honor people are. Every year or every other year when WWE comes in and wipes them out and takes all their guys, and now they have to start it all over. So what? It, but I'm just... You know what I mean, right? Like, like here's the thing. It's, again, it's business. And I don't, I don't subscribe to the stealing format. I, as a business deal comes up, somebody offers you more money to do your same job mm-hmm. somewhere else for nope, extra nope. cash. I agree. You have I'm the just choice saying... to work there or not. They have, and they have an opportunity... To raise your pay to keep you. I agree. If they chose not but, to do that, and that person chose to take a job somewhere else, that's not... None of this is my issue. Because it, it, it could have been a radio station. If, if they poached... If, if whatever local radio station pitched, took their producer, no, you're not I'm, you're not having heat with the radio producer. You're just mad because it happened to be a, right. a similar company. I, now, I take... I, I agree with you. But this is just the way the wrestling industry is. And you even you can admit it's and then, weird and backwards sometimes. Boo-hoo. But you look now, and in, in some of these wrestlers now are kind of, I don't want to use the word boycott, but they're not showing up. I know a handful of guys that said, I'm not going because I don't like what they're doing business-wise. And that's their but decision. what are they doing? Hiring I, people? I, well, <laughs> I, well, here's the thing. Here's what they're not hiring. Don't argue here's, me. Here's where they're not hiring. They're not hiring those guys. Uh, well. That's the issue. That's hey, If you want to come do the circuit and do the, the, the meet and greets at StarCast, We'll gladly have you, but do we want to hire you full time and put you under contract? I will. No. I well, will, that's where the butthurt comes in. I disagree because that's one of, one of the guys that I know would absolutely have gotten signed to AEW, and I can't if he was available. If he was available, but he's would've. not. But 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 he's boycotting even Starcast now. Oh, and boycott. Look, it's. But did they call him? Did they ask him to oh, come? Starcast, absolutely, they did, and he okay. said, "I'm not going." And, and you're going to start to see this because now. He didn't want to go, or he didn't want to. He didn't want to be. Asso- he did not want to be associated with what they're His doing employer. over there. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not. It's not even an employer thing. He just wasn't happy with the way they were doing business. Which, now, but what, what part but, of it? I, I'm curious. Like, I, what part of it did? I got to be vague. I got to be vague because I totally don't 100 percent know. But I can okay. tell you. You know, we can sit here and pretend we know everything what's going on in the industry, and there are things that are way over our heads. And and and, and you know, some people won't work with other people. I mean, you look at Bruce Pritchard. I mean, we were yeah. just talking about him today. If Bruce Pritchard went to a company, there's a handful of guys that would never go to that company just because of him. Yeah. So, so when when somebody when one of my buddies who's a top guy in the industry says, "I don't like the way they're doing business. I'm not going to go do this and that." 
I, I, I tend to think something else is going on here above our heads where we can argue the hiring of a producer or a director from a show, but there's something else a little bit bigger going on. And I worry that AEW as in their infant stages are really kicking down doors and, and ticking off some, some major players in the game. Uh, but I think, again, I think major players is, is relative to be honest. Like, I, I, Okay, so Impact's been around a long time, or and so is Ring of Honor. But if you really look at the grand scale of where they're at, you know, being on Impact's bad side or or on Ring of Honor's bad side, who cares? No, I get it, right? You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, well, for you and I, who cares? But at the end of the day, if you leave all, but if you leave all elite for whatever reason, and Ring of Honor and Impact isn't going to hire you, and maybe you're not quite good enough for WWE. That's a major well, blow. But well, let's look at it, let's look at it from another angle, though. If if you're looking at it and you're seeing that, you know, let's let's take an assumption that AEW takes off. They're on TNT. There's going to be a big spot. No assumption needed. It's no going to happen. They're, it's going to take off. It's going to do a great job. No assumption right? needed. So you 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 leave Impact or Ring of Honor. You go to AEW. Right. You're on you're on national television in prime time. You've got a good spot. You decide you want to leave there. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest. Smart Money says, "Hey, we've got an available option." They're gonna. It doesn't matter that he left two and a half years ago. Oh, it does though. I've seen. Listen, between if and, they and, can make. Here's the thing: if they can make money with him, and they choose not to because they're holding a grudge from two years ago, they're stupid. Uh, that's I, on their own. That's on them. And that I mean that speaks more not, to their business properties and their business acumen. Well, sometimes, than, sometimes than, you're right, but you you've heard it and you've seen it as I a mean, wrestling fan. You know, look, you burn one bridge, you're not welcome back. A lot but, of times, but, but look at uh, in the smart. But the smart business doesn't do that. Look at Vince McMahon. Let's be honest. The I'm not, wrestling I'm not industry w- is not smart business. No, but look at Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon does do smart business. As much as I don't like his booking and the way he does things, he is smart business. And he's had people Some, sue him for sexual harassment. Sometimes. Well, hang on Testify now. in federal court against him. Hey. And those guys still came back. He still did business because at the end of the day. Not all the time, though. But, not all, all the but time. One the, all but one thing. But they're, they're, everyone else has come back yeah. despite all of those things. 10, 12 years the, later. But, some, but, he but holds a grudge. Don't, sometimes. Don't act like Vince McMahon is this great forgiver. No, no, no. But at the end of the day, but when you Vince start looking holds, at business... Vince holds a major grudge. And in the prime of some of these guys' career, he's held their thumb down on these guys. And, and I'm then sure, on the... Look, and maybe so, but... We, we got to wrap, we gotta wrap this up. We got to wrap this up. We can't talk about this all show long. You're listening to the Wrestling Perspective. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about this some other time. Yeah. Wrestling Perspective Podcast, powered by BlueChew.com. Use a promo code PERSPECTIVE. We will be right back. All right, we're back. Wrestling Perspective, powered by BlueChew.com. We haven't done a Blue Chew ad yet this show. Uh, go to BlueChew.com. Use the promo code PERSPECTIVE. It keeps us on the radio. It keeps Russ and I happy. So go Very to, happy. Use the promo code PERSPECTIVE. I don't care what you do with it. Use it. Don't use it. It's supposed to enhance you in the bed. It's made from the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. I tell you, go use it. Uh, stop being the Brooklyn brawler in bed and start being the heartbreak kid in bed. Okay, that's all I'm saying. That's right. No more Dennis in bed. No start more. Start being Russ. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> sure, <laughs> so, that's, yeah. If that's the example yeah, you want. That's, that's, that's the right one to use. I, I'm I mean, okay with it. I don't see any that's issue fine. with it. Yeah. That's fine. That's, that's great. Good Good example. <laughs> But uh, promo code perspective. Also, if you go to whatforapparel.com backslash WPP, that is whatforapparel.com backslash WPP, go buy a shirt. Uh, From here on out, we are no longer taking profits from our shirts. We've decided that we're going to take the money and give it to rainbowconnection.org, which is kind of a smaller version of Make-A-Wish. And we picked a charity where... Every cent we donate goes a little bit farther. Uh, look, Make a Wish has millions of dollars being donated at a time. So if you donate 20 bucks, it's like putting a glass of water in a 30,000 gallon pool that's empty. It doesn't, yeah. it, it, I'm sure every dime counts with them. But if you go to Rainbow Connection, it means so much more and it goes for, farther. So that's why we're doing that. So go buy a shirt. It, we're not profiting any more off of it. We're giving all profits to rainbowconnection.org. So we've done Blue Chew, your ringside wrestling app. If you're watching now, hi, guys. Uh, If not, go to ringside wrestling app. It's free wherever you get your apps. 
It's great chat rooms, different stations, indie wrestling. Uh, I watched a uh, was it Kevin Steen match the other day on there. Really? Yeah. From uh, Ring of Honor? Uh, I don't even remember. It was an indie show. Oh, okay. but they do they they take these matches and indie shows and it, it's phenomenal. Just so find, un- it's unfound material and just check it out. And it's free, and you can listen to both the podcasts, this and uh, the one with PD and I. Yep. So there you go. All right, let's jump in and talk some wrestling. Raw SmackDown. You're done. I'm done with Raw, man. I I need a break. It's like it's like a bad girlfriend, man. I need a break. I can't. I. It's so terrible. I can't sit through it. I just can't. I don't blame you. I'm the same way because now I'm starting to flip where I would never flip. And yeah. I, I've made this case. I don't know if I made it with you or with Petey, but I will always love the WWE. And I will always go back to the WWE. But right now, they're so complacent. And what I think, if anything, AEW does is it reinvigorates impact. WWE to do better when they didn't have to. Yeah, it does. And, and see, here's the thing: I'm a little different with WWE. For me, you know, we, we've discussed before. I, I'm I'm a WC. I was a WCW guy through me too, through, right? So WCW was my love, and I feel like WWE's kind of always been my rebound. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't get sometimes at, at rebound. You know, nothing better else comes along. And you stick around. It turns out you're with that rebound a little bit longer than you expected. Twenty years, apparently. Right. Uh, almost. Um, and then you finally find something. You, then you find something like, oh, maybe this might be a better option. Maybe something better coming along. I'm hoping this rebound's over, man. I, I'll take anything else. I'm really hoping AEW launches. I've never been huge on WWE's way of doing things. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm fingers crossed that AEW has a presentation that I enjoy. You know, WWE has been a yo-yo. Uh, as far as content goes, because yeah. they've been the big dog, they get to dictate what they do. Yeah. Now, WWE has never been better in its in its entirety until it had competition, which AEW will do. I don't care what. One hundred percent agree. So they will make they will help. Both products will improve. Absolutely, of the competition, for sure. I, absolutely. So going forward, I and I set this up because I, I I'll flip and sometimes I'll skip SmackDown, you know, and watch the replays on YouTube. But yeah. Money in the Bank was not that bad. I really enjoyed Money in the Bank. And it's not one of my favorite pay-per-views. And we I, complain about yeah, this all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a I'm not a ladder match guy. Mm-hmm. I, I, like there isn't a single spot you can do in a ladder match that we haven't seen. No, but over and over and over. They've they've saturated us with ladder matches so much over the last 10, 15 years that I just don't care anymore. And I, I don't particularly love the Money in the Bank concept. I feel like it's it's played out. It's been a long one. Oh, there it man. is. And that's why I try to put that away. But but you um, know what? I I agree, but I like the money in the bank because of the implications of what you have on the line if you get that briefcase. And I I think it would have been better at WrestleMania or at one of the big four pay per views as as a separate gimmick match. Yeah, but, but, but here we are. Stupid battle royal. I mean, but right? here, but here we are. It's a pay per view. We got to live through it, but it was a very good pay per view, and the, both ladder matches were good. Zero complaints about them. I, I they were good for ladder matches, absolutely. I, I I didn't love that Becky lost one of the belts. I just I kind of felt like you, she needed to go one more pay per view. I thought, yeah, a little. It needed more time. I didn't. Th- I felt like they just started this Becky two I, belts. I, and I agree. Really, the, this is the first show after Mania, right? No, I think it, oh, no, really. Because Mania was in March, April? April. April. It April, was in April. April. This is May. Is it May? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe so a month. Yeah. I mean, really? Six, it's been six weeks. All right. They mentioned that the other day. Six yeah. weeks since Mania. Um, it's been Boy, six weeks. You, it you, seems longer, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You just really kind of got that gimmick going. So I, I, I felt it was premature to end it. I'm with you. But I, I mean, if you're going to keep the brand separate, I get why you're going to do it. But and I guess the way you they did it was fine. Up. You built her up. And by the way, can I complain about something? Yeah. Have you seen the advertisements for the One Saudi seen, yeah. the Saudi Arabia shows? No. I tried to avoid it. They were they advertised it as this will be bigger than Oh yes. This will be just as big, if not bigger, than WrestleMania, right? Yeah. You just buried your, your marquee show 
You sold out for Saudi Arabia money. But look, I'm not going to argue if it's good or bad. <laughs> yeah. that, that yeah, we, is, we did that last week, yeah, I think. Yeah, and I, yeah, I'm, put I'm not going to argue that, on that. But on you sold out your yeah. biggest marquee That's show dumb. that you built your company around, and you put the Super Showdown on the same level? What the yeah, hell are you're you guys enti- doing, you're entire, WWE? You're, yeah, your entire year built to that one night, and you just buried it under. Like, this is at least number two. By the way, and let me get a little meta here, and I might be reaching... But you had your first WrestleMania. With the, you you put the women on the showcase, the final show. <laughs> yeah. And now you're like, hey, hey, this yeah. super showdown where women aren't allowed, it's going to be just as good as this one, guys. Probably better. Probably. probably. <laughs> because we're not going to let the women headline That's, or even show up. Really, WWE? Yeah. Like, come on, yeah. Come come on, on That's man. Bush League, guys. I, sorry, I had to. It I is, saw that. I, I'm 100% on board with you on that. I, I have all kinds of issues like I, you know, right now we just saw Alistair Black, Kevin Owens, Sami yep. Zayn, Daniel Bryan. Uh, I think there were a couple more, maybe. Have all said, "I'm not going. I'm not doing it. I won't go." Uh, and I applaud those guys. Good for you guys, man. Good for your principles. We, standing up. That's good. I, I, I have a lot get, of respect. For we them. don't want to get too much in the no. mud on this one. No, but I have a lot of respect for those guys because I'm not watching it. But but I I I, I went off to the side rant to talk about Brock Lesnar winning the money yeah. in the bank. And everybody pooped on it. I thought they it did. was great. Yeah. I thought it was great. There's there's no guy in the WWE you've built up to be a bona fide champion more than Brock Lesnar. I and, agree. And I'm okay with him not showing up on every show because it does feel special. I wish it'd be a little bit more than what it is sometimes. Or at least have Paul Heyman come out and talk for him. I get it. Yeah, it, That would, might be my only tweak to it. But you built no other guy up to be a legitimate champion. It's like you have the greatest roster in wrestling history right now, and you've built them all up to be the greatest intercontinental champions. <laughs> Absolutely, no, you're you're not wrong on that. You're not wrong at all. And that's I know I know people jumped all over you on Twitter when you, oh, when you mentioned did. that, and I I came to your defense on that one because finally, you know, there one. are a lot of yeah, there are a lot of one. times I will I will pile on just to to stoke a fire, just why not to, to rip yeah. you on it? But and sometimes I deserve it. Yeah, you know, but this time I, I came to your defense on that because there isn't a bigger name than Brock Lesnar, and there's not a so there, there, no you booking wise no one has been booked as a bigger threat no than Brock Lesnar so even on a standalone two months out booked show he's a big threat storyline wise to the title right and now you gave him carte blanche to show up whenever however whenever he wants wherever he wants so every time that champion just looks a little bit defeated we're all gonna hold our breaths he, absolutely and any time he can come at, yeah. at any point and I love. That you've added an extra threat weapon to your greatest champ. Look, right now, I hate to say it, Brock Lesnar might be the greatest WWE champion in the last seven, eight years. Yeah, well, it's not been good. Otherwise, yeah. So, well, and here's the bonus too, right? People do hate Brock, right? Yep. They they hate him, and and you are building up both Rollins and Kofi into a babyface category. So when you're building them up. When you hear that music start or you think you see that guy built down, you, the idea that Brock might come in, and even if Heyman walks out, you, the fact that Brock might come in and take that belt at a, in a moment's in, in notice moment. gets you so much more excited and amped to be like, oh, God, I hope Kofi, I hope Rollins. By the way, get, let me ask you this. You get farther behind them and bigger behind those guys because you want to see the heel that's the threat get stopped so it's a great concept to me i like it i'm glad they did it i gotta ask you this question because here's the only plot hole in the situation and i'm i love wrestling and i will look past the plot hole for a good storyline yeah some of the best storylines have the worst plot holes right sure becky wins and she's only allowed to cash it in or bailey yeah bailey was yeah you're right bailey they made a mention that she can only cash it in against the SmackDown. SmackDown champion, right? Brock's on doing whatever he wants. Brock? Is he a fr- did I miss something? Is Brock Lesnar a free agent no, on each show? Because no, cause he showed up on SmackDown. He said he was gonna ch- he could challenge either one. Um Did he show up on SmackDown? Uh no, Heyman okay. did. Okay. Heyman did. And, to, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. And so they, they made it clear that he can go either one. But they all, and again. They, they they knew that you know technically in the match they, were, they the company technically allowed him to replace 
Sami Zayn, right? Plot holes, we get but, it. But yeah, but plot hole, they didn't make him have to come out until the 30 minutes into the match. Can we talk about this after the break? Because yeah, I'm not do done it. talking about yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, you're listening to Wrestling Perspective. Go to WrestlingPerspectivePodcast.com. Get this in the one with PD Williams and myself. Powered by BlueChew.com. Use the promo code PERSPECTIVE. It keeps us on the radio. If you enjoy listening to us every week, go there. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Wrestling Perspective Radio. Russ McCall, Dennis Farrell entertaining you here. Now, if you missed any part of the show, go to WrestlingPerspectivePodcast.com. Subscribe to the show. You can email us. I think there's a phone number. So if you want to leave a voicemail, uh, we'll play it on one of the shows. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. Maybe. I'll listen to it. Because I'll be honest. You know. It's like... <laughs> Depending on when you hear this, if you're listening on the radio, depending on what radio market, it's probably 1, 2 a.m. We're not live right now. I'm probably by my pool drinking. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you're not asleep. You might be asleep. I'm, I'm not. I'm asleep, for sure. But so, For but the next we, couple of weeks, I'll still be asleep at 1 a.m. <laughs> so we're, we're pre, we pre-record this. So uh, we have other ways for you to be part of the show, emails yeah. and all that stuff. Go to WrestlingPerspectivePodcast.com, and you can watch the video version over at the Ringside Wrestling app. Go there. I had to look that up. I was going to say, do me a favor. While we're on the Ringside app, can we not forget the name of the Ringside app? Sure. <laughs> All right. At least hey, once. Hey, guys, listen. I'm on board with you, and I and I got your back. Yeah. I tell you what. I'll, I'll cover his, his mistakes. Do you, do you have their back? I do. Let's pull out our phones and see who has the Ringside app and who doesn't. Right here. See? No, look at that <laughs> fakeness. It's like a it's gimmick. there. It's like a gimmick it's chair. There. You get you get all chappy if my phone, when I do my phone. Oh, so, you well, know. then we'll wait. Hey. And Fightful dot <laughs> com. Fightful's been breaking news for three years now. They've launched a premier service. Go to Fightful Select. It brings you all these great podcasts, such as this. Well, not you and I. Yeah, because we're oh, with Fightful. S- yeah, we're with SB Nation. But yes, you can. Uh, me and PD are over there. Uh, they've got uh, 205 Live, NXT, NXT UK. They've got Impact shows, Ring of Honor podcast, New Japan, NWA, Q&A shows, alternative dark match commentary shows. They're breaking news at every minute. And we've entered into an agreement where PD Williams and my podcast get such played a day earlier over there. So, I tell you, Except for a, this week, apparently. Yeah, yeah, this week, y'all. It is what it is. But <laughs> this, I mean, you listen... We've got some good partners, man. Uh, absolutely. Between Ringside App and Fightful and SB Nation, I mean, we really got a great group going on. You know, yeah, we're settled with Petey, but I mean, he's you know, the least known the out least, of all of yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, really. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> all right, let's jump back into this Brock Lesnar being a champion yeah. thing, let's do it. and the fact that he gets to select his opponents. Mm-hmm. Bailey didn't, which I really thought if you were going to turn Bailey heel. Oh, I thought, that, yep. That was the moment. That's what we talked about last week. I thought that was the moment. When I when she won that, I was like, oh. I feel, I felt like I knew it was coming. Yep. Um, and then they had her cash it in on Charlotte, which I think was a missed opportunity, to be it, honest. It was. I really do think it was a missed opportunity. I mean, I get that they're, they're planning. They, they still want to build around Charlotte. I mean. Here's the problem with that. And I love, I, I'm mixed. I am, I'm torn emotions because I love for a same night cash in. Yeah, I do. But you cash it in in the same night, you take it out of play for the rest of the year. So now for I the re- prefer that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're you're different. Yeah. You're not a huge yeah. money in the bank fan. But now we have Brock and yeah. he's I think it's going to be later than sooner when he cashes it in. Although, depending on what you listen to, if if you believe that they're going to put it up at the Saudi show between two senior citizens, the Undertaker and Goldberg, I don't. Ugh. Wait, they put up the, the, Fill me in. the rumor, there's a rumor going okay. around that they can find a way to put the WWE Championship on the Undertaker Goldberg for that match. I hope not. I hope no. I don't, I don't see why it would need it. I mean, I think there's I, the yeah. name value alone of both those guys should be enough of a selling point. You can use that belt to to highlight a different match. Here's specifically, my I think what Kofi Dolph is what they're looking well, at, right? Who so who knows? Um, here, you don't need that. Here's That's, my here's my issue. Not that the match is going to be good, but you have the, once again the most talented roster yeah. in wrestling history, right? I mean, we can agree through NXT and all oh, this the talent's stuff. Been phenomenal, off the charts. Wrestling history, yeah. the greatest, the greatest sure. roster ever. Yeah, and you're highlighting a pay per view with two guys that are almost in their sixties. Yeah, I, I mean, it's. I was. I'm a little baffled. 
Because let's be honest, they don't we, need gold. I, look, I get the Saudis. This is and, and if Gold, you, Goldberg's never been known to carry anything. <laughs> you know, he's carried through stuff to make it work. Right. Yeah. He, you know, and that last run was not phenomenal. Not, not phenomenal. I mean, there was ca- he was in short squashes for a reason because he was injured, and he's not very good. No, um, Undertaker. Again, there's a reason he also has been in these short little choke slam and walk out back out of the ring squashes. Because he's 900 years he old. He can't do it either. He neither moves like I move. Guys, yeah, neither of these guys can do this. Like, what in the world made them think that putting them together and be like, hey, guys, go out there and burn it down. Did you see? Was the, a good idea is beyond me. Did you see the report that came out last year at the, around the time the first Saudi, Saudi show was supposed to come out? And they had given a list of WWE of wrestlers they wanted to come. And, like, Yokozuna was on this list. <laughs> and and all these Oops. guys from the 90s was on this list. Show up, do it. And it's like, okay, look, I get you want to bring wrestling. Well, whether... in that case, you don't have to pay WWE. You just paid WrestleCon, man. Oh, right? <laughs> that's where, that's where, you know? I, it, it saved a ton of money, by the way. It's embarrassing. If I'm... If I'm supposed to be one of the world powers, right, whether you like them or not, whether you agree with their politics or whatever, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. They're a world power. Yeah. And they're requesting Yokozuma, who's been dead for how long? There's Google, guys. Google it. See who's still alive. Let's let's shorten that list up of guys that are still alive. Are they allowed to Google there? I don't know. I'm assuming. Let's pretend for just a second. Because I think can. there's some countries over there that are not. Yeah. I'm gonna assume. How about the uh, filtered? Whatever, whatever they do. Whether, but I mean, I'm sure this Yahoo. The maybe pr- they can still. Yahoo maybe the prince has access to Google. So yeah, but uh, look it up. You know, because uh, I'm I'm willing to guess. You could have figured out Yokozuma's been dead yeah. for quite a long time, and eventually you'll figure out that his name's Yokozuna. Yeah, not Yokozuma. That's all I say. You know, but <laughs> but it's, it's my well, Boston but accent. I'm, I'm can, repressing. Yeah, <laughs> I need to Boston for a minute. Yeah. Um, you can't you can't book a show in 2019 <laughs> off talent you watched on a tape trading network, right? Like it's, that's where they. That's that what they're song? doing. I mean, it's like I got these great VHSs. Mm. I'd really like to see that cat. Well, I got some bad news. Pretty much everyone on that tape's no longer with us. Hey, Prince, I just got this tape. We really need to get this Brutus the Barber beef cake over. Cake over. He cuts here. Hey, where's where's Marty Jannetty at right now? And he, and you don't have to spend the money. Jannetty will do it for an A ball of coke and a hooker. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, but uh, where were we? Sorry, oh, yeah, it's not very nice. It's the it's but true. it is what it is. It's the truth. It's not a lie. So we we know Marty. It's, <laughs> yeah, I'll party do, Marty. I'll do I'll do yeah. your I'll do your podcast. Uh, you you know you're gonna give me a bump. <laughs> no. Yeah, backdrop. That's that's what we're. Do- Anyways, we're getting dark here. Yeah. Um, my bad. So, uh, man. <laughs> we're, let's, so let's. Ross sucks, man. How's that? Why don't we go with that oh, transition? He, no, we've already been there. We've oh. been there. We moved up. We Did passed we? money in the bank. Wow. <laughs> then we no, went up. We draw. lost. We lost the show at uh, the Saudi France. Yeah, we knew Saudi. We're going to come back for the twenty four seven belt. All right. Oh, okay. Cause let's we, go there then. Because uh, here's the thing. Concept's great. You took the best part, at least the most entertaining part of the hardcore championship belt. Oh, I was, totally disagree. Yeah, was the twenty four seven rule? I, I like, that was an instant. Like, wonder what's on nitro see, moment for every see, time. See, every time that was in a what's on nitro. I, I I'll take it. the Jerry Flynn match. Thanks. All right. Well, yeah. we agreed to disagree, yeah. but I thought it was probably the most entertaining part of the hardcore belt. But here's it, it with the twenty four seven belt as it is now with the belt. It seems like all you have to do is punch someone and roll them up, and you can win a championship. Yeah, it's amazing how fast people get pinned. Oh, oh uh, crazy! And how easy, I, and how quickly it got to our truth. By the way, <laughs> I just want I want to point that out. Like, hey, we've got this great new concept. Yeah, put it on truth. Move it on. Is he still holding on to it? I see. That's how. I don't know. Here's maybe. Here's real quick. While we still have time I in the know. segment, where I think this is a good belt, ugly looking belt. <laughs> oh. Brutal. Good belt. Bonfire, bonfire ugly. Bonfire, absolutely. I, I, if you go out and buy this belt on you know WWE shop, you deserve to have your money. Taken. Please never listen to my podcast. Yeah, again. yeah. Or it's the ringside. Yeah, just delete the app. 
Yeah. Yeah. Turn off your internet. I don't want to know that you're listening to my show. Yeah. No, that's not the kind of fan we want. Here's (laughs) here's the thing. I think this belt would be perfect for WWE social media, where if you film a whole bunch of stuff in a week, where you break in and you post on YouTube like it's live, and then you show someone sneaking up to a guy at his house or at a gas station, I think that's where this belt could really work. Not, not. I would dial it back a little bit more off the television. Maybe you pop it in because they have to be a television here and there. But dial it back a little bit and really push this belt on the social media platforms. One of the listeners, and I wish I could remember who it was, said, wouldn't it be cool if you were watching something and they broke in with breaking news and they showed someone winning the belt? And I thought for a half second, I thought, boy, that would be kind of cool. You know, I what? would also be kind of mad. Like, why are you breaking into you know my WCW pay per view with this crap? But I, yeah, but they could do stuff like that. They could. They could. Here's the thing about the social media and putting it online, right? Mm-hmm. So, with as terrible as the shows have been, I do get a lot of my WWE catch ups on YouTube. Yes, off of their Facebook, off the Facebook feed I'm, or, or Instagram. I'm scrolling through on Twitter. And a uh, video pops up. Oh, good. I only watched an hour and a half or all. There's a quick little video. I'll watch three minutes of this, right? Right. Here's the thing. You start putting that stuff on there, and you you start over-saturating me with 24-7 title crap. You don't the have chances to... are I'm going to scroll past that fast. So I'm going to do that enough. I'm going to start scrolling past the stuff I care about, too. And then eventually, I'm not even going to catch up on the stuff. It doesn't have to be uh, over-saturated, but I really think that's where I would put the majority of the twenty four seven title. I put that whole belt in the trash can. Well, no, I agree. The Where's the Medusa? At? Someone call Medusa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That now that I would stay tuned to Raw for for Medusa to come out, grab the belt, drop it in the can, and say that was a terrible plan. Never do that again. I, you know, I think it was a rushed. You have a report somewhere on your phone that you were going to read. Yeah, yeah. They they said that um, USA Network has put pressure mm-hmm. onto WWE lately. Uh, specifically conter- concerning the third hour of Raw and their ratings. Uh, the, you, we, and that they've been sending WWE ideas from things that they liked from the past. Right. And that it was acknowledged that they were all bad ideas internally, but this seemed to be the best of the group. And so they decided, they figured they had to take some kind of idea that USA was sending them and, 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 and make an attempt so that's what they did, and you know, I, I just I don't know. I I, I don't agree with that. I don't way. agree. I, I don't. I don't think you have to. I think that's one of those erroneous reports where yeah. Vince, there's there might be less than a handful of times in the forty years he's been doing this, fifty years, where he might have had to have done something to change. Uh, and I don't even know if you think about bringing it down the from was it uh, seventeen to PG thirteen. Yeah, I think that was him for for based off yeah. of sponsors. Sure, yeah, uh, I agree. I don't know if the death of Owen Hart, which by the way we were recording 20 years on today. 20, 20 years, yeah, uh, in St. Louis. I I don't know if if that had forced him to do anything different other than... I don't think so. But but there's there's not been that many times he's been bullied. And I don't think this is one of these times where he's being bullied into something. No, I, I don't think so. You, you know, I, I just... Something just occurred to me as you were saying that, that, you know, if, if, if it is true that in general, whether or not this idea came from them, that USA is putting pressure on WWE due to failing third-hour ratings, and they're not happy about it, mm-hmm. part of me now is thinking, well, shoot. Keep that belt on the on there. Spend the third hour putzing around with the hardcore title. Let those ratings plummet into the floor because that's not. This is going to help. This right. is going to hurt. All right, Russ, I'm cutting you off on that point oh, right there. Fine. So uh, we're going to commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk some more wrestling. WrestlingPerspectivePodcast.com, powered by Blue Chew. Use the como, promo code Perspective. I'm going a little too fast. Be a Russ, not a dentist. Yeah, that's right. Uh, perspective. What for apparel.com backslash WPP. It all proceeds by a shirt goes to rainbowconnection.org, ringside wrestling app. Welcome back, wrestling perspective. Russ McCall, Dennis Farrell, powered by fightful.com. Go to fightful select. You get the wrestling perspective podcast with Petey and myself a day early. 
powered by bluechew.com. Use the promo code perspective. It helps keeps us on the radio. Russ, is there anything we missed that you want to circle back to as we wrap the show up? Not that I can think of, man. All right. I think Good I night, off everybody. A lot. Yeah, yeah, I popped off a lot today. So I'm going to let you. Uh... I'll let you put me in check a little bit and no 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 check yeah. you know i just want to touch on uh pock who yeah oh yeah 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 for people who don't know who he is so he used to be neville neville um he was booked for double or nothing not against... Aaron neville no not Aaron. well that'd be I, i'll tell you what you want to book somebody else i don't book know Aaron neville. much hey adam pagers Aaron neville i'm in but i know i love you <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so he was he was neville in wwe mm-hmm. Um, they pulled him from the Double or Nothing card. He pulled himself. He pulled himself from the Double or Nothing card because uh, as a whatever he's organization. Dragon Gate Dragon champion. Gate in Japan. Uh, his deal was that he wasn't going to lose anything. He didn't want to lose building up to it. He didn't want to lose. And I think, that, I think the plan was for him to lose this match. It was the buildup was this is the long-term arc. It was he was supposed to beat Paige and then move on to Omega and then lose to Omega. Okay, and he didn't want. They weren't going to have him do that. He didn't. See, want I didn't to do know that. any of this. Yeah, he didn't. So he didn't want to do the the next lineup job, which was to Omega, mm-hmm. because they wanted him to stay undefeated as Dragon Gate champion. So it, uh, AEW was not interested in starting the arc if they're going to have to stop it eventually. Anyway, they'd rather plug somebody else into that spot. I don't blame both sides. If I'm the I Dragon, bl- if I'm the Dragon Gate champion, uh, Dragon Gate, I don't want my champion getting beat by AEW. Okay, especially so if me, we don't have a a working relationship. Okay, so we have two thousand tape traders in the United States. That's on average that are watching Dragon Gate. This is a national United States company. No, do I, your job, man. I, do your job. You booked it. You you knew what they were going with when you did it. Uh, you know what? We're not watching. No, I we're we, not watching. I, no, so I get it. Who cares? It, Dragon Gate. I had. Hey, I didn't know he was Dragon Gate champion. I. I didn't know that no, he had I'm an undefeated you. streak. I didn't know any of that. Zero clue. It makes zero difference. And, and I think you know Neville or Pac has a ego about sure. himself. Yeah. And it's interesting that this happens, especially after he takes his ball and goes home from WWE. He looks bad. He did it twice now. That, exactly. So that's where I was going. But listen. Yeah. That's neither here nor there. I'm sure we'll talk a lot about it next week. We'll definitely have a lot of all in talk. Yep, and uh, you know we'll talk to PD about his you know booking, wrestling perspective. If you enjoyed this, missed any of it, go to wrestlingperspectivepodcast.com. Guys, thank you so much. We'll see you again next week. Russ McCall, Dennis Farrell, we're out.